Welcome back. Sunrise continues with a look at the Day of the African Child. On June 16, 1976, in Soweto, South Africa, thousands of black school children marched in a column more than half a mile long to protest the low quality of education being offered to blacks and demanding their rights to be taught in their own language. Hundreds of them were shot. Uh, there were fatalities. But since 1991, the African Union has used June 16 to honor the children who took part in that march. The day is also used to highlight the current situation and rights of the African child to quality education and to better life. The theme of this year's celebration is humanitarian action in Africa. Child's, children's rights first. What has the situation been like for the African child, for the Nigerian child? For children, indeed, across the world, what would it be like? Indeed, that's what we're looking at today. And to help us look at this, from our Abuja studio, we have Fabian Buckler, Program Manager, Regional Lake Chart Plan International, joins us from our Abuja studio. Taiwa Kinlami is a child's rights activist. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Abiola Sanusi will join us via Skype of the Safe School Declaration Subcommittee, Education Emergency Working Group in Nigeria. She'll join us from Bornu State via Skype. And Olabisi Olugasa, Right Hand Innovation Center. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, let's begin with you, um, Taiwo. Children are believed to be the future. Indeed, every parent, every human being sees them as the tomorrow. When the large number of African children are out of school without the requisite 21st century quality of education, or is it 22nd century now? I don't, we don't know any game. Uh, what does it say of the future? Well, um, what we have found is that on Children's Day, um, WHO released a report that 40,000 children in the Northeast were going to die of malnutrition. Now, UNICEF does a day before released another report to say that the situation of children in the Northeast is worse than it was in, in 2015 when there was a crisis of malnutrition there. So what do we find? You find a nation that starves, that starves its own children. And when you starve your children, you starve your future. Then you look at education, for example, 13.5 million Nigerian children are out of school. Nigeria has 13.5. Yes, Nigeria has the highest number of children out of school in the world. 50% of all the children out of school in the world are from Nigeria. Then you look 50%. at Yes, then you look at you look at Lagos State for example, there are 1700 public schools competing with over 18,000 private schools. So you find all of this and you find that at the end of the day, most of the people that are affected are the children of the poor, the hewers of wood and drawers of water, the oi poloi, the wretched of the earth at France, for now we refer to them. Now the children of, 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 of the rich are hardly affected in terms of social provision of provision of social amenities. Now, so in Nigeria today, we don't have underprivileged children, you know, because we, we make a mistake by referring to these people as underprivileged. The people you call underprivileged are denied of basic rights. What they are denied of are not privileges. They are denied of health care. They are denied of education. They are denied of shelter. They are denied of food. Those are not privileges. Those are rights. So I call them the denied, the persecuted, the abandoned. And those are, that's what we see. And at the end of the day, on the street where I live, there's no Nigerian child there because most of those children are giving birth to abroad. You know, because today the Nigerian parents is looking at who is well off. He's thinking that what is the future of my children here? So when, they, when even the middle class people who will struggle, look for the money, go and give birth to children abroad. So you have two sets of children now. You have those who are Nigerians, their faith is in Nigeria, and they are the, ch the children of the house of wood and drawers of water. They are another set of children who are not Nigerian. They are just in Nigeria for the time being. In case things don't work out, they go to, they go to their country, America, Britain, even Ghana. So, look, sir, that sounds like a pathetic situation. Yes, it does. And what I will say is um, what uh, my our friend has said, uh, that's um, Taiwo, is really true. But uh, I would rather we begin to look at the what do we do to salvage the situation. You know, when we look at the future, my own definition of the future has to do with the children. You know, and they are just, that's just where we need to focus our attention. 
and especially our educational system. You know, you begin to look at the curricula, you know, in the educational system, and you, you are afraid. You wonder where we are actually headed. You know, many years back when I graduated, you know, I, I graduated feeling so empty. You know, having gone through, I don't want to mention the name of my institution because I'm going to say, <laughs> you know, I was really disappointed. You know, having been through one of the so-called, you know, uh, greatest university in Africa, and then you, you graduate and you are... You, I know you, the you, one. You don't, <laughs> and, and you don't feel, you, you, you don't really fit into the labor market. You know, I ask myself sometimes, that, what is the actual problem that we have? Is it that there are no jobs? No. Now, as an entrepreneur, I can tell you categorically that there are jobs. <laughs> Talking about the Nigerian situation, if every problem in Nigeria, you know, calls it's for... A it, yeah, it's a, it's a potential job, you know. And that's why, you know, what I do right now as an, as an entrepreneur is that we, 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 we have looked at what are those things that the Nigerian educational system has failed to address. What are these extracurricular activities or education, let me put it that way, not just activities but that we can add and, and if, make if, if I may come in here, system richer. You, one of the things Taiwo has talked about when he was talking, he mentioned two sets of people. Yeah. The Nigerian child, who's the child of what do you call them, child of the wood, water drawer. The drawers of the water, the hewers of wood, the oil polo, the, US, the yeah. wretched of the earth, as France okay. will refer so to them. So that's one set of children. Mm. And then you have the other children who are not who are not Nigerian but live in Nigeria for now, according to for now, for now according to Taiwo. But when you want before you talk education, would you talk about their feeding, their sustenance, their health care? These are some of the rights the African child is not having. Do you know in 2014, in 2014, the International Labour Organization that declared June 12 as a day against child labour. Since 2014, said the solution to child labor is social protection. Because they found that if you talk about child labor, where I live, there's no child hawking there. There's no child hawking where I live. You know, but, but when you go to Ajegunle, Amokoko, Tambotambo, Logo, and the rest of that, that's where you find people who hawk. And when you find people in one room, when you find people in one room and, and eight children in one room, 12 people in one room, and this is a room of, face me, I face you, 12 rooms. An average of eight people in one room, eight times 12, one t bathroom, one toilet. And these are human beings. Now, when you go to places like Amukoko in Lagos State, I tell you, rats are neighbors. They are not, they are not, they are not roaches. They are not, they are not rodents. Things that, ro yeah. rodents. They are neighbors. So the way forward, you see, Afri uh, 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 International Labour Organization said the way forward is that state members of United Nations must take responsibility for social protection, which means the solution to child labor, for example, is provision of shelter, okay. provision of food, provision of education, provision of health care. Okay. Um, I need you to respond to that bit about taking care of the child. Before you even talk about education, so that we can go to our budget. Yeah, we all need to, all hands have to be on deck when it comes to taking care of the personal and individual needs of our children and even as, uh, as a nation. You find that people are living in abject poverty, and um, what's the way forward? You mentioned in Ajegule a family of eight, ten in one room. Yeah. And then they just concluded a segment, you know, with uh, Madame, um, Benite. Madame Benite. Yeah. And, you know, the, 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 you know, it was made mention of that. Um, you find a situation where people just give birth to children without any form of, you know, caution and control. Mm. I think there has to be some form of education in this land, enlightenment. Mm. You know, our people Is have to understand. Is it time for us to begin to look at the issue of our population? We, we, Very we, important. We, we need to look at it. I think so. We need to look at it. We have to look at it. If, if, we, if we are going anywhere, if we are going to look at the growth of our economy and the development, we have to look at it. Okay. Or let, they're not going anywhere. Let, let's bring in um, Fabian Buckler, Program Manager, Regional Lake Chad Plan International, joins us from our Abuja studio. Um, 13.5 million African children moved from their homes by conflict, climate change, poverty, and in need of humanitarian help. That sounds like a huge situation. Is there a solution?
Good morning. Um, I only got the first part of the question. So basically, you were asking me about the situation of of um, of uh, children in humanitarian crisis, and if there's a solution, I guess, right? So basically, what I what I can tell you right now, I mean, if we look at uh, northeast Nigeria, right, at Borno, uh, Yoba, Adamawa state, um, there's a huge amount of, um, of uh, people displaced, 1.7 million. Big part of them are, of course, children. And what we can see, if we speak today about about uh, child rights, that the big issues are basically the you know right to protection, uh, right to education, right right to health, and and that's basically um, something where we need to uh, work on, where we need to ensure that our children Children are protected. Um, uh, my colleagues in Lagos they spoke about um, about the right to health, the right to um, to education. But what is about protection? I think protection is basically one of the core rights, which also ensure the um, you know the right to uh, survival. So I think that's something where we really uh, really, uh, really need to to focus on. Um, I also think that we need to differentiate between, uh, uh, you know, we speak about children, but let's look at the different needs of, uh, of boys and, and girls. Um, because I can tell you that the situation in the Northeast, the reality is that um, um, girls are, uh, well, I mean, children are, are, you know, have the brunt of the conflict, but the situation of, of, uh, of girls is a particular um, complicated because they're even more vulnerable. Yeah, and if we look there at different age brackets, I think we also really uh, would need to focus on adolescent girls, yeah, their right to health care. Uh, sexual reproductive health, um, their right to education, which is completely denied. Uh, secondary education um, rates are really, really low uh, across the whole country, but also in northeast Nigeria. I also spoke about protection, look, the incidence of gender-based violence. So I think that, th that those are uh, some things we need to tackle, and we definitely need to uh, invest more in, in, in protection systems. In, in parentheses, uh, uh, in one sentence, can you just tell us quickly what regional Lake Chad plan international does yes so I mean, uh, we, we know all that, that the crisis which started in uh, northeast Nigeria has spread to, um, you know, to Niger, uh, Cameroon, and 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 Chad. And we know that there are 2.5 million displaced. So we have big displacement in Nigeria, but we also have displacement from Nigeria to Niger, Cameroon, and Chad. So basically, we as Plan International, we're using a regional approach to tackle um, to tackle this regional crisis. So we are trying to address the root cause of the crisis, which are gender equality, which are um, which are um, like um, you know, youth unemployment, um, lack of education, etc. And at the same time, we um, we really focus on humanitarian assistance with a particular focus on on children, and again, a particular focus on on girls and adolescent girls. So we're focusing on, on mainly on child protection, on gender-based violence, and on uh, education. Back to the studio, the studio now, um, Tao. Is, isn't there a law in this nation that says that every child of school age should be in school? Okay, well, let's start from the Constitution of Nigeria. 1999 Constitution has amended. Chapter 2 of the Constitution says that every child, every, every, every child and everybody in Nigeria has right to free education to university level. That's what Chapter 2 of the Constitution says. And free? Chap, chap, yes. Chapter 2 of the Constitution also says the welfare and the security of the people shall be the primary aim of government. So when you, fi when you find a situation where uh, government do exist, but the welfare of the people now becomes secondary, the way to judge government actions and omissions is by looking at Chapter 2 of the Constitution, which is the objectives of the Constitution, which says the welfare and the security. So whatever government is doing, we have to, lower, we have to bring it down to welfare and security of the people. Welfare is critical, so we are talking about um, shelter, we are talking about food, we are talking about education, we are talking about health, we are talking about protection of children when it comes to children, because children are also citizens of Nigeria. See, please note, you know that there's no such thing as grand citizen. My children are not grand citizens, they are citizens of Nigeria. So the question is, what are crews to them by virtue of the fact that they are Nigerians? Because you see, I run, I run my family as a local government chairman. I'm responsible for everything. I'm responsible for my electricity, I'm responsible for my security, Water. I'm responsible for my water, I'm responsible for my children's school fees, I'm responsible for everything. And so, at the end of the day, you know, Mrs. Benitez was talking about patriotism. You see, because, you see, when you talk about patriotism, you need to define what it is. Patriotism simply means loyalty to your country. So, the word, operating word there is your country. 
when you do not feel so if i have a car i can't drive my car into the world deliberately because it's mine i know the benefit that the car is having me mm. it's going to it brought it brought me here it's going to take me out of here i have another again it's going to take me there i can't just crash it on the wall but if the car does no good to me i can discard it now so if i'm in a nation and i have no impact the nation has no impact on me i cannot trace to to the nation the certain benefits that are accrued to me mm -hmm. I, I mean i work somewhere if i work somewhere if my employers don't take care of me uh, 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 there's no plan of the state to take care of me and so at the end of the day it is difficult for you to be patriotic in a nation that you cannot call your own when there are two layers of so-called citizenship you know i was in the u.s and a man was driving me uh it was a, it was um what do you call him uber driver and so I, I, he said he said he said you are the last you are the last passenger i'm picking today i said why he said because i go for dialysis i said what do you mean he said i do dialysis three times a week he said my kidney has packed up um two kidneys i'm waiting for 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 kidney uh, transplant i don't have a donor yet i said so do you have family he said yes i have two children i have my wife i said i did not been affected by this or dialysis because i recognize that in nigeria for you to do dialysis 100k per dialysis and if you do three dialysis a week, which work are you doing? You three hundred thousand. If it does six, three dialysis a week times four, that's that's how many dialysis a month. Right. <laughs> then times times one hundred k. That's one point two million a month. How is he going to survive? And he tells me, don't worry, my insurance covers it. I have a health insurance. Everything is covered, you know. But if he's here, you will have to go to Facebook, or Twitter. Or, or, or Instagram to okay. say this person's photograph appears above is a good Nigerian. Please, can you raise money for him so that he can? He wants to go. He needs 15 million. We want to do kidney transplant, and that is but the kind cannot, of situation. You can, you can have health insurance in Nigeria now. You can have health insurance in Nigeria, but you, you can have health insurance in Nigeria, but you know who are the people that have access to health insurance? Is it the is, is 82 million Nigerians are living on less than one dollar per day? So it it's so that it don't look as if we're just talking about the problem. We're not providing a solution. For me, I think the way forward is I was on a program and somebody was asking me, new government has been sworn in. What 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 do we expect of them? I said, whatever we expect of uh, expect of them, they were not ready to agitate for peacefully, call them, make them accountable peacefully, it's not going to happen. Mm. Rights are not granted a platter of gold. Nigerian child doesn't have a future. If we do not as parents, for example, okay, for example, you send your children to private school, for example, do you ask the private school, what measures do they have in place to protect your children? Okay, How so much I will, they so I will just hold, hold, hold your thoughts. So we need to go on the break. When we come back, Mr. Lucas, you answer the question, what do you do to protect the child? And then what kind of education should the Nigerian or the African child be getting? What are the components? We'll be back shortly. Please join us again. Welcome back. We're still talking about the day of the African child. Um, Mr. Lucas, uh, I said you were going to answer a question. Taiwo asked a question before we went on that break. He said, you send your child to school, to a private school. Do you ask the private school what measures are in place to protect the child? But I now said, let's put it this other way. What kind of education should the African child, the Nigerian child, be getting? He's talked about the second... Um, uh, chapter of the Constitution yeah, that yeah, guarantees that's... free education for the Nigerian child. What kind of education should that child, what component should make up the education the child is getting? Thank you very much, Nyota. Um, looking at the kind of education, you know, um, we should be considering an education that takes care of people being innovative, being creative, that allows people to think outside of the box. For example, I, I refer to the curricula, you know, generally in, in our educational system, how that a child, how that you graduate and that you're wondering where you actually fit. You know, the global companies of the world actually don't go for those who graduate with first class in code. There's nothing wrong with you graduating, you know, with first class, but they want people who are creative, people who are innovative, who can solve real-time issues. Problems combating us, you know, facing us as a nation. And the earlier we get that, that right, the better. We need to start looking at how to position ourselves as a nation. And there's no other way than investing in our future. And how do I mean our future? In the African child, in the Nigerian child. We need to look at the mindset. What kind of mindset are we building? What kind of impact are we making? You know, we want to build a patriotic Nigeria, in a patriotic Nigerian, but... He or she hasn't been through 
a worthwhile educational curricul uh, curric curricula or curriculum in, in different you know, fields of endeavor. You know, and then at the end of the day, you, you, you expect, like we, are, we want to reap where we have not sown. Yes. So we need to look at this very critically. You know, talking about leadership, we are, we are found wanting. Talking about uh, uh, our health system. So what, what, what exactly have we been able to get right? <laughs> Maybe nothing. And if we must get anything right at all, we must look at investing in the mindset. And then maybe I, 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 I want to differ a bit from this. I like humanitarian activities and their the rights. But I, I also don't want us to dwell so much on the, um, uh, this uh, entitlement mentality. In as much as I appreciate that we should uh, give the children what they ought to have, you know, as leaders should be responsible, but we should also teach them how to fish. Don't give me fish alone. You can give me for the time that I need it, you know, that I, I have in dire need. But you should teach me how to fish. How do you do that? Don't just give me money. Give me a very sound educational system, and then I will know how to fish. I will, the world will become a better place. And for Africa, you know, especially, will become a better place. I, I, I actually look forward to a time where, you know, the Britons, the Americans, will struggle for the Nigerian visa. It can be a better place. But it was, no, it was it, the time it was like that. Yes. <laughs> it may, it, we might not have had that in the past, okay, yeah, yeah, you see. When I was in university, we had exchange students. There were students from America yeah. and the University of Ibadan. We want to return there. back to that. We want to be, you know, we, we, I am particularly proud of our nation, and I know that we are, we are blessed, you know, with brains. You know, our children just concluded, you know, some projects in which they put together a song, they put together some device, you know, saying that we have brains, but that uh, the brains are draining out of the country and that, that has to stop. You know, we are blessed. You know, I was driving to work uh, sometime earlier this week, like two days ago, thereabouts, and I, my, my eyes actually got teary because I saw a bus packed full of public school students in a, in a, in a, in a rickety bus. I, I don't think I would like to go near the bus because it can tear your skin. They were packed full of stuff. I, I still intend to go ask where they were going. I wondered whether they were going for an excursion. That's the state of our educational system. The public schools are nothing to write them about. And right now, the next level is that we are beginning to appeal to uh, corporate institutions to don't let's wait for government. In quote, we are all government. Okay. You are a mother, I am, and we are all leaders in our own different spheres of life, you know, in our spheres of influence. We can begin to do something, no matter how little, to influence the future. Right. At least invest in Talk, the children. Talking about safe school, safe education environment for the children, we're joined via phone by Abiola Sanusi, who's the chair, Safe School Declaration Subcommittee, Education and Emergency Working Group in Nigeria. Um, Ms. Sanusi, um, if you can hear us, you heard what uh, Mr. Lucas had talked about, a situation where public school children are packed in a bus, probably headed for an excursion. That was in, in Lagos. But you can imagine what goes on in where you are in Medugri, for instance. Tell us, what's the situation there with the children? Quite a number of them out of school. And how safe are they? Uh, Ms. Sanusi, yes? Um, right now, we have about um, 2.4 million children that are based in Borno, Adamawa, and Yogi. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yes, Ms. Sanusi, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. So, um, so um, we have um, we have um, this children. Okay. Um, so right now we have about we have about 2.1 million children that that do that um, education And then um, out of all those children, we have about um, 900 of them in Okay. So um, so at least two then I'm sure that they do have quality education in this um, emergency um, situation. Ms. Um, Hansi, if you can hear me, um, you were saying about 2.1 children out of school. 
Okay, we'll, we'll get back. To, we, we've lost her there. We'll come back to you. We do understand where you are might not be the network there might not be better, but we'll come back to Mr. Anderson on that. But Mr. Buckler, um, that you've heard from um, at least I, I hope you heard a bit of what Mr. Anderson was talking about: 2.1 million children out of school. But you are part of a humanitarian aid situation here in Nigeria and in Africa. Is it just enough to bring this aid? How about, is the aid really getting to the children that need it? Yes, I, I mean, I, I think, you know, with uh, humanitarian assistance, you don't resolve any problem, okay? So it's basically really um, to ensure that people uh, can survive in dignity. But at the same time, we're trying to address root causes. So looking at education, what we're doing, we, of course, we work with the Ministry of uh, Education to also ensure, you know, the system strengthening of the whole education sector. We're doing teacher trainings, and we're actually working with them to, to really ensure that um, children um, get taught at the right level. Because one thing is school enrollment but it still doesn't mean that you know the education has the right quality and please take into account that in northeast nigeria you have children who missed out of school for like three or four years so if you bring them back to school they're actually not really able to follow so what we are doing is a kind of uh, accelerated learning programs to ensure that um, children are able to catch up and then you know to enroll them in formal education um, then, as I said, the formal education is really important, but it needs to be the right education. Yeah, it needs to be uh, uh, working on life skills of children, so to basically ensure that they learn how to critical think. Um, and as my colleague said, you know, to, to think out of the box. So I think that's really important. It's really clear that with, uh, uh, you know, humanitarian assistance, you, you work on the same symptoms. But what we need to make ensure that at the same time we really address, uh, readdress root causes. Related to education, that's, for example, the value of education, particularly, you know, for, for girls. And um, there are different, uh, different uh, beliefs which basically don't value the education of, uh, of girls. And that's I think, something I think we really need to, to tackle. Yeah, because if you invest in your, in your children, if you invest in a child, you also invest in society and the future of the community and of Nigeria. So I think it's really, really important to also tackle those uh, root causes. Okay. Have you had to ask the parents permission to get some of these children to, to go to school? Have you had to ask the parents of some of these children to get permission to allow them to go to school? Sorry, could you repeat the question, please? Have you had to get permission from some of the parents of these children to enable them go to school? Yeah, of course. So we can we cannot just yeah. So basically, we cannot just you know bring children to uh, back to school, and it wouldn't also be a sustainable way. So of course, we work with uh, parents, with caregivers, to to speak with them, and you know really to to ensure that they understand the value of education for their children. But you know, look at the look at northeast Nigeria. Quite often, children they also have a really important role to play in terms of income generation to support the uh, household economy. So we need to make sure that parents uh, you know actually get support to 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 create their own living, but also to ensure that they see the value of education for their children because if we you know if we would just send children back to school without uh, without their parents first it would be a completely wrong approach it wouldn't be sustainable and you know you cannot uh, work on on education if you don't go get the buy-in from from uh, their parents their caregivers traditional leaders religious leaders so it's really a work uh, it's a full community approach a full society approach where you really need to explain and to discuss about the value of education why it's so important um uh, Biola Sanderson, uh, we understand you're back online. The, the children, you talked about 2.1 million children that you have out of school. Of those children, some of them are uh, orphaned without their parents. They've lost their homes. How, is it, yes. how easy is it for you to get them to rebuild their self-worth and sit down and study? No, it's not um, in terms of building, uh, building the... Um resilience, um, we also need to give them um, psychosocial support. Um, we also need to um, encourage them in terms of uh, trying to build their um, self-esteem and also, and, and, and also in terms of getting them to actually go to school. Um, many of them have never been to school before. And um, one of the things that I would like to raise um, is the fact that we do have um, IDPs that are being moved into schools, therefore depriving children.
children as going to school. So that is something that we need to address. You know, because um, you know, because um, we are then denying children their right to education. We also need um, uh, we need to have more um, more of um, temporary learning spaces, and um, also we need to have more uh, we need to have um, more support um, um, for the um, we need to have more uh, more um, more uh, support. Uh, in terms of um, teaching and also learning materials, and also in terms of um, encouraging people that do want to work um, in this uh, in this um, high risk areas, that do want to provide um, education, and then also we have to um, we also need to increase um, school feeding. School feeding is very important. Getting children to go to school, we need to have more of those school feeding in these areas. As well. Um, how easy has it been getting the parents to buy in so that they can allow their children to go to school? I think uh, in terms of um, when you actually see your child excelling in school and also in a and also in a um, learning environment that is safe, that is secure. Uh, we do have parents that, you know, that do encourage them to do go to school, but, uh, but we do need to address the fact that um, most of them are actually vulnerable and they need to, um, and, they, um, um, and they also need um, to earn money uh, for them um, to actually survive. So therefore, um, we do need to work on the, um, on the actual um, livelihood um, for those parents as well. Oh, okay. Um, what about a question of safety for these children? How safe are they? Uh, in terms of safety, uh, one of the things that we are um, that we do have to recognize is that um, we cannot have armed personnel securing all the schools in this region. Therefore, we have to think of other ways of how to make the schools more secure. So we need to have community response um, um, mechanisms in place, and then also we need to build um, we need to build the um, resilience of the children and also um, of the staff uh, in terms of having uh, some of these um, early um, early um, early um, warning systems in place as well. And then we also need to able to um, as, um, train them in terms of. Um, in terms of them um, identifying people within, um, within their own communities that are not actually from there. And uh, you know, so we need to do um, a lot more and not just focus on like um, um, visual security of having um, armed, um, um, armed people because um, that is not sustainable. Thank you. Tao, the, we have this um, Steve Ogo, Marvel C. Sentinel, he says the day of the African child we can't talk about it without talking about on the rich children who are taken from their homes and made to serve as house helps or taken to other homes in the name of schooling them. Yeah. Um, uh, child labor, that, that comes under child labor. Um, the Child Rights Act um, who only adopted the Labor Act, the section of the Labor Act that kicks against child, against child labor. It's important to understand that the child is anybody below 18 years old. A child cannot work. Now, by that, we're not talking about home chores. You know, a child should be made to do home chores for the purpose of gaining independence, for the purpose of think, being responsible. But any type of job that a child does, any type of work that a child does that is remunerated, any child that now, uh, and those kind of work now disturbs the child development, educational development, physical development, and ex exposes the child to any form of danger is forbidden by law. So we find people who claim that they bring children to Lagos and they say that uh, they, are, they are sending them to school, but it's, 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 um, it's a big fraud because um, what we have found is that you bring these children to Lagos, you register your children in private schools, um, then you register these children in public schools. I've interacted with public school teachers and public school leaders, and they come back to tell us that even these children that you put in, in, in public schools, they, you, you, they, they, they have to close at a particular time 
in the public school so that they can go and take your own children with the driver in school. Now, the driver does not come to pick them in school. They walk home or find their way home. They have to leave school at a particular time. And so when they leave school at a particular time, they have to be home so that they can go and take your children. Now, when teachers come, when the public school teachers complain to you to say, wow, this child is not learning. You are not allowing the child to stay. Then you tell them that, did you come to my house to tell me to register him? Or her? Are you the one uh, paying whatever levies we are paying and all of that? Should those, should those kind of parents so, not be reprimanded? So for me, uh, NAPTIP is, 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 is in charge of this to ensure that both when you talk about uh, trafficking internally and trafficking externally, we have had cases where we have had to report you know, people who do these kind of things. A child is anybody below 18. A child cannot be exposed to any form of labor. If you want to help a child, bring the child to Lagos, register the child, go through the adoption process or fostering process. All of that are available in Lagos. So you bring that child to Abandaya or Abuja, go through fostering. Let, give the child the same privileges, the same right that your own children enjoy. Mm -hmm. When your children go to private school, let the child go to private school. Okay. When your All children right. eat on the dining table, let him eat on the we dining table. We have to go. We have to go. In 10 seconds, your closing statement. What would you say? Mm, what I would say to the African child or an African child is this. I would just want to apologize on behalf of the, of the parents, of the leaders, the government, you know, as we popularly, <laughs> popularly refer to our leaders, that we have failed you, the African child. We want you to know that there are treasures that are laid up on the inside of you and that you can actually make things better. You can actually come up and change the whole system, you know, by, you know, bringing out the best in you and making use of all the resources that are at your disposal education-wise. We promise that there will be a change, you know, in the educational system, especially to give you the right platform, to give you the right mm. uh, uh, springboard for you to uh, uh, become who you should actually become. Thank you. We're so sorry, the African child. <laughs> Thank you so much. We allow you know. Close here today. But well, we want to thank you so much, Fabian Buckler, Program Manager, Regional Lake Chad Plan International. Thank you for joining us from our Abuja studio. We also had Abiola Sanusi, Chair, Safe School Declaration Subcommittee, Education and Emergency Working Group in Nigeria, who joined us via telephone. We had Taiwa Kinlami, Child's Right Activist, Chair in Lagos. And we had Olabisi Ulugasta, Right Hand Innovation Center. Thank you all for sharing your thoughts with us. Sunrise will be back in a moment. Please don't go away. Bring it on.